There's a new Windows driver that fixes a ton of stuff. One of the biggest games on the Steam Deck just got a huge graphics upgrade. And here's how you can boost your FPS by over 25 frames. How's it going everyone and welcome to Deck Ready, the channel all about the Steam Deck. So yes, Valve has released a new APU driver for the Windows side of the Steam Deck. So if you have it installed as your only OS or you're dual booting or you're using a micro SD card like me to just pop that in and get Windows 11 running really quickly, uh, you should upgrade your APU driver. And this was actually kind of interesting because Valve just just said it had performance improvements across the board. They weren't very specific about it. And after digging around on Reddit, I've kind of figured out why. So one big reason I think they're being a little vague about this APU update is that it includes OpenGL support on the Windows side. Obviously OpenGL works just fine on the Steam OS side of things. You can run pretty much any emulator like Citra, for example, which uses OpenGL and it runs before today a lot better than it would over on the Windows side. But now that Windows has OpenGL support, it's probably going to run just as well, if not maybe a little worse than it does over on the Steam OS side, which is great because a lot of people like using Windows on their Steam Deck and they have a lot of their emulators set up over on the Windows side. And I think it's good anytime the Windows driver gets updated to include more support for more apps because that gets us closer and closer to the official release of Steam OS 3.0, which we all know is going to bring along with it official dual booting support, which is something that I'm really waiting for on the Steam Deck. The micro SD method works just fine. And that's the issue. It's just fine. It's not great. And I don't think it runs nearly as well as it does if you install Windows 11 just on your actual SSD or dual boot it. The process for dual booting that we have now is just a little bit outside of my technical knowledge. And knowing that we are going to get official support coming down the line, I don't want to go through a bunch of processes to like partition off half of my SSD to install Windows and then have to figure out how to undo it. When Valve releases the update eventually that allows me to do it the official way. I'm definitely not saying it's a bad thing to do and also I'm assuming that a lot of the people who are installing Windows and doing it in the dual boot style on their SSD, they have the knowledge to do so. So they probably also have the knowledge to undo it when that time comes, if they want to do it, right? Like it might be working better the unofficial way than it will on the official way that Valve releases. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. The holidays are right around the corner and HelloFresh makes this busy time of year easier with chef crafted recipes and pre-portioned ingredients ingredients. They're delivered right to your door so you can spend less time meal planning and prepping. Busy days and late nights call for more flexibility. That's why HelloFresh plans work with your schedule. You can change your preferences, delivery day, and address in just a few clicks. As your calendar starts to fill up, you can count on HelloFresh to give you back some of your free time by making cooking simple and quick. Everything comes right to your door so you can skip the grocery store and a ton of the prep time. After a busy day here in the studio last week, I cooked the Beef Flauta Supreme and I was honestly shocked at how easy it was to follow the instructions and how quick I was able to get everything prepared for dinner. Usually on shoot days, I just stop for takeout on the way home or order food to be delivered and that gets expensive quick. So this was a much better option. So if you wanna try HelloFresh for yourself, go to hellofresh.com and use the code DECKREADY70 at checkout for 70% off and free shipping. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. But the other cool thing that came along with this APU update is hardware accelerated video. Now this is obviously a thing on Windows it lets you use the hardware to accelerate graphics performance. A lot of games actually do perform a little bit better with it. There's only one game in recent memory where I had to turn it off to get better performance, and that was Modern Warfare 2, but that port is really weird because it came out, it worked great, the beta was amazing, and then like a week after the game came out, they pushed an update or they did something server-side. I don't really know what the issue is, but the frame rate in Modern Warfare 2 for me has just been completely tanked across the board on my gaming PC. I'm getting stuttering, I'm getting weird frames, drops, the latency is all over the place. It's super frustrating. But yeah, turning off hardware accelerated graphic scheduling in Windows fixed a lot of the issues for me. But over on the Steam Deck, it's good to have that support finally there because A, it's just going to make games run better overall on the Steam Deck if you're using Windows. But B, it's going to improve streaming in apps like Parsec and Moonlight. A lot of the people who have been using those services to stream games from their main gaming PC to their Steam Deck have been saying that they work pretty well. But with hardware accelerated video, it's going to work even better. So I'm glad Valve is including support for that because I can definitely see the draw from streaming from your gaming PC. The latency is probably going to be a whole lot better than if you're streaming it from like the internet on something like GeForce Now or uh, Xbox Game Pass. But yeah, there's a new A 
GPU driver for your Steam Deck, so if you're running Windows, you might wanna check it out. The only reason I say might is because I am seeing a lot of people complaining about Modern Warfare 2. Uh, if you turn it off, which you can do in Windows, I think if you go to like Windows, Settings, uh, Display, and then you go to Advanced Graphics Settings, and then you can turn it off and on there. I don't exactly know if that support is included with this APU driver on the Steam Deck. That's just how I do it on my main gaming PC or how I did it for Modern Warfare 2. So if you already installed this APU driver and you're experiencing worse Call of Duty performance, now you know how to fix it. Just go into the settings and turn off hardware accelerated video. Next up, we're sticking with the graphics upgrades because if you're someone who plays Cyberpunk 2077 on your Steam Deck, and there are a lot of people who play that game, it's consistently in the top 10 most played games on the Steam Deck every single month, especially after Edge Runners and the 1.6 upgrade that the game just got. I can see why so many people are finally playing it for the first time or returning to it after playing it for the first time in 2020. Well, today they released the 1.61 1 patch for the game, and among other things that I'll talk about in a minute, the most important inclusion is FSR 2.1, which looks a whole lot better than FSR 2.0. Like FSR 2.0 was a really big upgrade over what we had on the Steam Deck at launch and what a lot of other games were using, but uh, 2.1 looks even better. So it's nice to see that individual games like Cyberpunk 2077 are getting this upgrade because you need to use FSR to get a consistent frame rate in Cyberpunk. FSR 2.1 has sort of become like a miracle setting for a lot of games recently. Uh, Gaming on Linux mentions this in the article I'm reading for this video, but I've actually gone and tested it out myself. Dying Light 2 also got an update a few months ago that included FSR 2.1, and that took that game from being completely unplayable on the Steam Deck to being able to lock it at 40 FPS, 40 Hertz. And it looks and runs really, really well thanks to FSR 2.1. Like you don't get as much jaggies, you don't get as much of that soft focus or weird pixelated effect around characters' heads like you saw with Kratos and God of War. Now, because this is a cyberpunk update, they're including a whole bunch of bug fixes in there so you can go read the patch notes yourself. But what I wanted to point out that I'm really happy they fixed is that they got rid of the frame rate drop. This is what they're saying. I haven't tested it out yet, so it might still be there. Uh, the frame rate drop when you close out of menus. Apparently, that's gone. So that was something that was really frustrating where after you would exit the map, the frame rate would tank for a couple seconds and then even out. Obviously, it's good that it was evening out and it didn't completely ruin the experience or anything, but it's nice to see that they fixed it because that's been annoying for a long time. Like, I immediately noticed that when I booted the game up after watching Cyberpunk Edge Runners. But yeah, there was another game that just got an FSR 2.1 patch that I normally wouldn't talk about, but I noticed in my last video when I went through the top 10 games on Steam Deck in October on Steam, Gotham Knights was very high up on the list. I think it was number four on the list, which is kind of surprising just because A, that game is not getting great reviews, B, it came out like two weeks before God of War Ragnarok, and C, uh, it's a hot mess on PC and it runs even worse on the Steam Deck, but a lot of people did pick it up and are apparently playing it on the device, so that also got an FSR 2.1 update. It's also gotten a couple patches since it came out that make it so that the graphic settings, when you change them, actually take effect. Yes, at launch, Gotham Knights, when you would change the graphic settings or the resolutions, you wouldn't really see a big performance improvement and that's because it wasn't actually saving the graphic settings so it's nice to see they fix that the one thing they really need to figure out with this game on the regular PC side of things is how to make the frame rate more stable if you're locking it at 30 because when you pan the camera and the frame time is all over the place it's super frustrating I have seen that the Steam Deck if you can get it to stay at 30 FPS which should be a lot easier now that you have FSR 2.1 if you use the built-in frame limiter like set the game to 60 and then limit it to 30 within the Steam OS side of things, like using the three dot menu, that makes it smoother than it would look on PC or even other consoles like the PlayStation 5. That's kind of the biggest hidden benefit of the Steam Deck. We've obviously seen it smooth out other huge games like Elden Ring. I think the two best places you can actually play Elden Ring right now are still on PlayStation 5 running PS4's version in backwards compatibility mode, or of course on the Steam Deck because you get that smoothed out frame rate, which if you're someone who's very sensitive to stutters like I I am is kind of like the best thing ever. I hate that every game that uses DirectX 12 and or Unreal Engine 4 comes out and has compilation stutter where every time something happens for the first time in the game, there's a little one second stutter. And even though Digital Foundry constantly makes videos where they're pointing it out, most recently Sackboy A Big Adventure was a great example of this. These developers just don't do the fix, which is so simple. All you have to do is make it so your game caches its shaders when you start it up. So whenever I see a game that does that, I get super excited and I feel like I spent my money in the right way. Obviously on the Steam Deck, we have to deal with that less, but you do still see some stuttering once in a 
while. So hopefully as time goes on, we start to see A, more games with FSR 2.1 and B, more smooth performance when you're using DirectX 12 or of course Unreal Engine 4. And the interesting thing here is that you've actually been able to get FSR 2.1 in Cyberpunk 2077 because there's a mod you can pretty much use on any game that has FSR, God of War included, that's kind of easy to set up. I decided to wait just because I had heard it was only going to be about a month or two until we actually got the official update. And just for me on the Steam Deck, the official updates that include these features. But yeah, if you're jealous of everyone playing God of War Ragnarok over on the PlayStation 5 right now and you want to play God of War 2018, I'm pretty sure this mod to activate FSR 2.1 will work because as far as I know, that game doesn't officially have it just yet. And the last news story I have for you guys today is a very cool one that to me personally is extremely interesting. You can actually allegedly boost the performance on your Steam Deck or the FPS performance by over 24% with a pretty simple change. The video where I first heard about this is over on the channel Cryobite33 and it's called Easy and Safe Health and Performance Boost for the Steam Deck. Now what this is actually doing as far as I understand is that it's allowing your Steam Deck to better manage its memory both RAM and on the SSD and that in turn makes games run better and getting it going is actually extremely simple. All you have to do is go to the GitHub page and then download the installer file and then put it on your desktop and then it'll add a bunch of icons to your desktop. If that sounds familiar, you probably have MUDEC installed on your Steam Deck. It's a lot like that process and I haven't actually gotten a chance to try it out myself yet. I'm going to go do it after I record this video, but from what I can tell, it works with pretty much every game. It just can work better with some games than it does others. And another cool benefit is that if you use this, it actually decreases the wear on your SSD. SSD, so it could increase the longevity of the SSD inside your Steam Deck. Now, the reason you're seeing up to 24% better performance is that, again, it depends on the game, but also it depends on the read-write speed of your SSD. So if you're like me and you bought a one terabyte SSD and put it in your Steam Deck, it really comes down to the read-write speed versus the SSD that came originally with your Steam Deck. So I would assume that the 64 gigabyte version would not benefit as much from this as like the 256 version or the 500 gigabyte version. And finally, updating your Steam Deck actually doesn't revert this thing. So you're not going to have to run this installer every time you update your Steam Deck. And personally, if this really does work as well as it's claimed, I think it would be cool if Valve reached out to the person who made Cry Utilities and got it built into the actual Steam OS. Because if it's making games run that much better on the Steam Deck, I think it's probably worth doing. Now the issue is it only works with games stored on your actual Steam Deck, SSD. It doesn't work if you have them on a micro SD card. And the problem Valve has run into is that the process you're using here can again brick a lot of micro SD cards. So they have to figure out something there and make it so it only works for games that are installed on your local SSD or I guess they could just leave it as is because it's very simple to install as it is right now. You should definitely go check out the video that Cryobyte33 made on this entire process because it shows you not only how to do it but tells you why it's improving things on your Steam Deck and there's a handy little list towards the end of the video of confirmed games that it improves performance on and these are big games. The the list includes BeamNG.Drive, Kerbal Space Program, Monster Hunter Rise, Apex Legends, The Witcher 3, Sekiro, and other emulators. So with games like Monster Hunter Rise or The Witcher that already run pretty well, they both run at 60 frames per second. But if you use this performance fix, you could probably boost some of the settings even more. I've also seen that it improves frame rates in GTA 5 and Cyberpunk 2077. So if you want to try this out, you can pair it up with the new FSR 2.1 update that Cyberpunk got, and it might make the game run and look even better with that combination. So yeah, I I'd be really curious to see how this affects God of War because that game looks and runs really well at 30 frames per second at original settings. And of course, if you use FSR 2.0, it runs even better, but you still get a couple FPS dips below 30 here and there. So I'd be really curious to see if this affected that performance and allowed it to stay at a true locked 30 frames per second at those original settings. Of course, keeping the native resolution at 800p and then using FSR to downscale it to like 500p or something like that. Either way, I'm glad this is super simple to install because I just went through a huge troubleshooting process getting Diablo 3 installed on my Steam Deck and set up correctly with controls. Like making a shortcut in Steam that opens up Diablo 3 and logs into Battle.net and just does it all every time I launch the game. That was how I spent like four hours this morning. So it's good to see that this is like literally download it to your desktop and you're good to go. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and I'll see you in the next one. Shape on.